Hey, fourth graders, it's time for me to record my next chapter of uh, Out of My Mind. I am upstairs in my bedroom because my whole house is filled with people. Uh, Mr. Jackman's working all the way downstairs. The boys are working on their schoolwork on the main floor. And so I came up here because it was a little bit quieter. So you can just kind of pretend that I'm sitting on my pink bench and reading uh, at deer time. So here we go. So this is chapter 19. The week zipped by as I studied at school every day with Catherine, after school every day with Mrs. V, and every evening at home as well. I reviewed words from all of the levels of my board. I practiced spelling long words and matching facts and dates. I even made up my own games. Mom quizzed me about flowers in medical terms. Dad asked me questions about economics and retail management and sports. I swallowed it all in. Sometimes I sit in my room and just type in new sentences for Elvira to say, one letter at a time. It takes hours. But once an entry is in, all I have to do is push one button and the whole sentence will be spoken for me. I guess the question I get asked the most is, in a lot of different variations, what's wrong with you? People often want to know if I'm sick or am I in pain or is my condition fixable? So I prepared two answers, one that's polite but kind of wordy, and one that's kind of smart-mouthed. To those who are genuinely concerned, I push a button and say, I have spastic bilateral quadriplegia, also known as spinal cerebral palsy. It limits my body, but not my mind. I think the last part is pretty cool. To people like Molly and Claire, I say, well, we all have disabilities. What's yours? I couldn't wait to use that one. When I showed it to Mrs. V, she laughed so hard she snorted. Now it's Saturday before the tryouts, and Mrs. V and I are sitting outside on the front porch. I'm wearing a light jacket, but it's one of those warm February days that fools you into thinking spring is here. I want to warn the little flowers and say, wait, it's going to snow next week. Stay put for another month. But every year, the early flowers shiver in the last snow of the season. We watch wisp of clouds hover over us. A canary-colored goldfinch is perched on the railing, looking at the empty bird feeder dangling above it. If he could talk, I bet he would ask for thistle and more warm days like this. What would you do if you could fly? Mrs. V asks me as she glances over from the bird to me. Is that on the quiz? I ask, grinning. I think we've studied just about everything, Mrs. V chuckles. I'd be scared to let go, I type. Would you be afraid you'd fall? She asks. No, afraid it would feel so good I would fly away. It took me a long time to type that. She's quiet for a very long time, and finally she says, Melody, you are a bird, and you will fly on Monday when you take your test. I hear out the front door, a door slam next door, and I wave to Mom and Penny as they wander over to our porch. Butterscotch, clearly happy to be unleashed, bounds next to them, sniffing the base of every tree. Penny walks with such determination, her face alternating between frowns and smiles as she concentrates on marching the path between our two houses, then climbs the front steps with both hands and both feet. She's wearing a puffy winter jacket and a hat for the day, a blue straw thing that's scrunched and crooked from her sitting on it so many times. Poor Doodle, of course, is dragging behind her. Dee Dee, she cries as she finally gets to the top step. I'm still boggled by how easily she does things. I touch the sleeve of Mrs. V's dress as I think about what she asked me. Freedom, I type, pointing to Penny. Freedom. Mrs. V nods. She gets it. What a glorious day, Mom says, breathing deeply. Do you think we're done with winter? No, more, more cold coming, I type. You're right, but this is a nice preview, Mom says as she unzips Penny's jacket. How's the study team going? Butterscotch rests on the bottom of the steps. I swear that dog looks like she's smiling. Good, I say through my meta-talker. Violet, you're amazing, Mom says. The time and effort you have put into teaching Melody and getting her ready for this test, and she breaks off, blinking hard. You have taught her thousands of words. Nobody seems to be amazed that Penny is soaking up and learning thousands of words, Mrs. V says with a shrug. Melody's no different. Mom nods in agreement. I know you're right, but it's just so much harder for Melody. Nope, it's harder for us. We have to figure out what's actually in her head. I'm getting tired of them talking about me like I'm in another room, so I turn up the volume on my sh machine and say loudly, let's eat cookies. Cookies, Penny repeats. Mrs. V stands up. I hear you. Let me find us some sweets. 
As she heads into the house, she turns and says softly to mom, Miss Melody here has a special place in my heart. Heartburn, I type, and they both start laughing. Mrs. V returns a few minutes later with a plate of hot chocolate chip cookies and two servings of milk in sippy cups decorated with Disney princesses. I hate to admit it, but a sippy cup does make it easier for me to drink. Cookies! Penny screams. She reaches for the plate, but Mom pulls her arm back. Mrs. V gives Mom two cookies on a paper towel. She blows on one and gives it to Penny, who proceeds to shove the whole thing in her mouth. Look at my little penny pig, Mom says laughing. Mrs. V breaks my cookies into pieces and places one piece at a time in my mouth. Although I'm a caramel lover, these chocolate chips were made, chocolate chip cookies were made in chocolate heaven. I swallow while Mrs. V gives me a sip of the cool milk. Cookies slosh down great with milk. I don't even have to chew. I'd love to have enough control to feed myself. That's on my list of things I would wish for, along with walking and going to the bathroom and, oh, yeah, flying. Interrupting my thoughts, Mrs. V asks, what continent produces the largest crop of cocoa beans which give us this chocolate? Africa, I type. She nods and gives me another sip of milk. So what state produces the most milk? California, I reply. I think you're ready, Melody, she announces. Mom reaches over and strokes my cheek. You are going to rock that test on Monday. Then what, I type. Then you should run for president, Mrs. V interjects. Yeah, right, I tap. Just then, Dad pulls into the driveway. Boy, does his car need a trip to the car wash. I guess Chuck got off early today, Mom says, looking pleased. Maybe we can get some early dinner. Dad gets out of the car, stretches, and waves at us. Penny's face lights up. Daddy, she calls out. Standing up, she looks at us with a devilish grin. Don't you dare, Mrs. V says, and I mean it. Penny ignores her. Go bye-bye in car. Penny loves to ride in the car, doesn't matter where, to the store, the post office, as long as she gets to ride in the little car seat in the back. Doesn't make much sense to me because she falls asleep as soon as we make the first turn. She hurriedly bumps down a couple of porch steps, waiting for a reaction from Mom. Penny, Marie, Brooks, you bring your little buns right back here, my mother cried. My mother uses all three names. You know it's serious. Penny reaches the bottom of the steps, look back, looks back at us and smirks and says, See, Daddy, gotta go to work. Then as fast as our little legs will carry her, she bolts for Dad. Mom, of course, has other ideas, and so does Butterscotch, who jumps up, gives three short barks, almost like Mom using our three names, and calmly walks in front of Penny to block her path. Good dog, Mom says. Come back here, little cookie face. By this time, she has hurried down the porch steps and retrieved my sister. This child, she said to my dad, who's ambling over, is an escape artist. I need four sets of eyes to keep up with her. She wipes chocolate off of Penny's face and nuzzles her. Good thing you've got butterscotch, Dad says as he brushes the top of the dog's head. How's my shiny copper Penny today? Dad kisses Mom on the cheek and takes Penny for her. Penny manages to rub the rest of the chocolate from her hands onto the front of Dad's shirt. Just what I've always wanted, Dad said as he glances down. Chocolate-covered clothes. The napkin Mrs. V passes him only smears it more, but Dad just laughs. Go work, Daddy? Daddy just got home. Give me a break. He hands Penny gently to Mrs. V and then sits with Mom on the porch swing. How's my favorite melody, he asks. Super, I type on my machine. Ready for your competition? Yep, I tap. Dad gets up and squats in front of me. You're going to ace that test and make that quiz team. I can tell he means it. I believe in me. My family believes in me. And Mrs. V, it's the rest of the world I'm not so sure of.